First and foremost, I would like to clarify that all of the information that I'm going to keep about to give you in this video, uh, there is no spoiler, so you don't have to worry about that. Have in mind that there's a lot of people out there that is already playing Dragon's Dogma. A lot of people <laughs> has been able to purchase the game at Walmart and Target or what have you, at the different stores out there. So yes, there's some people around there that already have their has their hands on the game. They have been playing it, they have been streaming it, Capcom has been full at work, <laughs> uh, taking down all of that information. But it is true, Reddit it's full about uh, of a lot of that information. That being said, everything that we're going to be discussing in this video is going to be based on uh, official stuff, uh, interviews with Hideaki, Tsuno, and uh, uh, kind of little nice things that you should expect for when the game launches and to get a little bit more pumped up. And some of the things that are not as exciting, <laughs> as a matter of fact, the first one on the list of the checklist that we have right here, uh, that one is the, the, most, the most disappointing for a lot of people. Because, uh, yeah, the game on consoles, at the very least, it's going to be uh, locked at uh, 30 FPS's, and I'll rephrase that, it's not locked at 30 FPS's. The game is targeting a 30 FPS uh, frame, frame, uh, and uh, about resolution. It seems to be like 4 cap. It is uh, uncapped, it is uh, 30 FPS uncapped, and the target on consoles is aiming for 30 uh, frames per second. Now, we do not know any official statement of, as if this is like 4K 30 FPS's. The people that had played the game, they, they say that it is like 4K, but nothing official has come from Capcom yet. And uh, since we don't have like a game mode, we do not know have way uh, of knowing if it's actually 4K. Unless we have uh, people from like Digital Foundry to break down all that information uh, about that. But uh, yeah, the one thing that it is for sure is that it's uh, it's aiming uncapped 30 FPS's. So. There is indeed that. Now, a uh, little bit more of uh, obvious information. There is no multiplayer in this game. I've been getting lots of comments in my videos of people concerned about the multiplayer aspect. Remember that there's a whole lot of new people coming into Dragon's Dogma that haven't played Dragon's Dogma 2012 because Dragon's Dogma 2 is making quite a lot of noise. So don't be surprised if there's a lot of people asking about that. We have the pawn system. The pawn system is just basically hiring the pawn or uh, the assistant the, that other player creates you can hire their pawn and they are going to be equipped by different players but they are not uh, like players they are just AI uh, pawns that different players created so yeah there is no multiplayer the reason for that is very simple Hideaki Tsuno has said in several interviews uh, that he likes to make single player experiences and the whole balance of the game comes from making a single player experience he doesn't want to make a game that he then has to balance to multiplayer, that's not his goal. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's great, that's amazing. Now, uh, based on that as well, there's a little bit of a changes when it comes to outfitting your pawns and outfitting your main character. And there is, uh, this is something that only veterans are going to notice, there is a change in the outfit system. Uh, we used to have like uh, clothing for our characters below the armor so there would be like chain mails or silk uh, uh, tunics and, and what have you now they broke it down onto four pieces of equipment so you only have like the the helmet the armor the legs the gloves or braces and their phrasing for this is that they want for players to have a little bit more versatility. They, the reasoning behind this is that Itsuno said that at the end of the day, on the previous Dragon's Dogma, everyone was rocking the very same thing at the end game. And yeah, I mean, that's natural. Uh, like, there were not many options to the armor or, or gear that you would have for your characters. So you would naturally get the best thing possible. And I'm guessing that <laughs> in Dragon's Dogma 2 it's just going to be the same case, it's just that we do not have uh, an underwear anymore. <laughs> we don't have any more on this. So yeah, that's kind of uh, cool. Now we have a seamless world. This is something that I'm very excited about because... Uh, yeah. Uh, hand in hand with that, this is two points right here. We have a seamless world. The dungeons, the 
uh, in store stores or everything that you see in the world there is no loading screens everything is seamlessly connected in the world and this is something that they weren't be they, they wouldn't be able to achieve in the previous technology so they did implement it in here and it goes hand in hand with the exploration because the exploration uh, they have a little bit more respect for the player and if you will the exploration kind of uh, scenario it's kind of like you would have an Elden Ring where you don't have like a lot of check uh, checklist marks out there if you have an objective, if you have to do something, you can see that something in the distance and then you decide how do you want to get that. But there is no marks. Uh, if you see points of interest, let's see that you see some ruins or you see some monsters and you decide to go to investigate, that is going to, uh, going to be entirely up to you because of that seamless exploration, that seamless world building that it's just open there for you. And you can decide where do you want to go, how do you want to go, and when do you want to go. So that's very, very, very cool. And as a matter of fact, uh, regarding like the endgame as well, Hideaki Itsuno has said that because of this world building, that uh, the, this kind of system for world building that they have right here, there's a whole lot of stuff that players are not going to be able to experience per se that much. Uh, he says that there's going to be of course a lot of people that are going to experience the main story, but if you have this seamless open world that doesn't have checklists or marks, there's going to be hidden uh, places, hidden monsters like the Sphinx that you're going to need to find them, but you're going to stumble onto them if you're exploring so that's very very cool like they're going to be hidden in the world and you do have to be exploring naturally the world for you to have access to all of this content which is very very cool if you ask me now it seems as well that uh, dragon's dogma is more difficult than the original dragon's dogma I'm curious to see about all of this, I do not know if the people that has already played the game has any input about, uh, on this, but uh, Dragon's Dogma 2012 did have uh, difficulty sliders, so that's one thing to consider. I'm not saying that Dragon's Dogma was that difficult, as a matter of fact, it, well, it, it actually wasn't until you get into deeper, like, post-game or end-game or the different uh, different end-game bosses that were not required for the base game, but I think that the balance was uh, pretty good, actually. It was, it was quite nice. It, I wouldn't say that this is like kind of a, a souls like where the difficulty is just right there but they are saying that i'm guessing that since the world is a little bit bigger and you can get to encounter for higher levels of enemies so that's something that you can you should be very much aware that there are higher level areas if you go there by being a low level or having the wrong equipment not upgrading your equipment you get over to a higher level of area then uh, you're not going to have a nice time in there remember that there's dragons ogres minotaurs and what have you lots of different mythological creatures that you can't find other so i'm guessing that you should stick to your uh exploring your regular exploring of your regular leveling areas that's one thing that you could do because you can go other into the world and enter into a high level area that you can fight if you're a good player i guess but he shouldn't, like you shouldn't, you really shouldn't. But Hideaki Tsuna says that the game is actually a little bit more difficult than Dragon's Dogma. There's also a Roman system. Now the Roman system is very, very cool in this game because he was crappy <laughs> in Dragon's Dogma on itself. You would be able to like for make for example make Fornival uh, fall in love with you without you trying and that would be like your love interest at the end of the game when you have like that kind of cutscene <laughs> it was very very much weird they tweaked everything in here for for it to be a little bit more natural so you do have to make a little bit more interaction with the npcs you can uh do quests for them but not only that can you, you can give them gifts and you can actually select which one is the one that you are using as a love interest and the world is going to interact based on the love interest so for example if you're having a love interest relationship and that NPC is acquainted to another NPC that you have other in the world or in the main city and they know each other and you try to do like a kind of a love affinity they are going to notice and they are going to react to all of that so that's something very very cool uh, It'll be interesting if it's like a little bit more uh, dynamic when it comes to, for example, not allowing you to have, uh, for maybe have lovers in different cities and they did not find out because they are not connected or maybe they found out it's a whole bunch of shenanigans but something very interesting is that love interest relationship in here it's a little bit more grounded it is a little bit more more condensed so that it doesn't happen that much randomly and it is going to impact the world one thing to have in mind as well is that this is another impact uh, point of discussion NPCs can die if you run away 
from a monster. You, you're low on health. You don't have any potions. Uh, potions. You want to run away from that specific encounter. You see a city in the distance, and you say, "Oh God, I'm saved." Well, you should really be careful about that because if you take that monster to the city. That monster is going to wreak havoc in there, and that monster can kill the blacksmith, can kill your boyfriend, can kill your girlfriend, can kill your wife, can kill your husband, and what have you. So yes, the city guard might be able to fight against that uh, monster, but if it's something very powerful, it's most certainly going to kill someone. There's also wake stones to revive the NPCs that could be interesting or important to you, but remember that they are a very scarce resource at the very first early stages of the playthrough so and finally the fast traveling system goes hand in hand i should have mentioned it goes hand in hand with the seamless world interconnectivity there is not that much of a freedom when it comes to the uh world fast traveling system you still have the fairy stones the fairy stones are still very much scarce but uh hideaki Itsuno wants for you to explore one thing that you can use as a uh, fast travel kind of mechanic, you can use ox carts, but they can be attacked in the middle of the transition from city to city, and uh, you have to fight against them, against the monsters that, that are going to ambush you. So there's always something going to be happening in there. And if you do want to use the regular fast travel that doesn't have any consequences, it is very expensive later stages of the game. You can use it, but on the early stages of the game, you, can, you can't. So... The overall experience in here is just go out there, explore, and fist yourself in the beautiful world of Dragon's Dogma that you're going to have right there on March 22nd, real close now. If you like the content, like in the video, super appreciate it. Not only you today, you're a gorgeous and beautiful person. You're a gorgeous and beautiful person. Join the Discord, we're always discussing about Dragon's Dogma in there. We're going to be sharing pawns in there. And uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Have a lovely, lovely day and goodbye. Give to